First, a very warm welcome to everybody here in the audience. And starting with the lunch, I have the perfect egg for you. Because this is um, every Sunday discussion on our breakfast table, how to get a perfect three-minute egg every Sunday. And this is how it looks like, and which is particularly important if one has only one tooth. These are different modalities to scan boiled eggs, and starting with BMO to see the core, X-ray with the air inclusion under the eggshell, impression fracture based on CT, and MR T2 weighted imaging to separate raw from boiled eggs. Only ultrasound has the possibility to separate five, six, seven, eight minutes eggs uh, in terms of shear wave speed, like in that example. But what about the eggshell? That's a problem for ultrasound. And so we move on to our new experimental study to separate a one and a three minute egg. Starting with the European Union, United States and Russia, in terms of uh, descaler, we used vinegar from the European Union. It takes 12 hours to have a descaling effect on the eggshell. Coca-Cola works also, 24 hours. And important for the Russian guys in the audience, there is no effect on vodka on the eggshell. That's a very good news for all the Russians here. So these are the two eggs, starting with the left side, the one-minute egg, and the right side, the three-minute egg. We see a lower shear wave speed on your left, more artifacts in strain elastography, less artifacts in tissue Doppler imaging, which is named trickle lower sign, so we can separate these eggs perfectly based on ultrasound. And this is the reality, and so ultrasound is the modality which can subdivide these eggs. Starting the session with the outline, and we talk on the interdisciplinary ultrasound center of the Department of Radiology. And important to understand, this concept is connected to the rebuilding of our main building, um, where we see the situation in February 2015, and hopefully in 2016. Sometimes it's very difficult for Berlin with building projects, but it will open in 2016. And that's our new big ultrasound center with more than 13 scanning rooms. And the idea or the basic concept of this ultrasound center is to have an integration of an interdisciplinary network. The meaning is every free bird needs a free home. Starting with the first department, the department of urology. And for us in our daily routine, it's very important to separate testicular cancer. Most of the cases are germ cell tumors and 95%, but sometimes sex cord gonadal stroma tumors. And there is an overlap of benign tumors. And this is an example of a small testicular lesion where we see first the BMOD scan, the basket pattern based on SMI, a new technology. We see it's much stiffer in strain and shear wave elastography. And our new idea is to have an organ sparing surgery. And the reason to separate these small cancers is to use perfusion analyzers. If you look very careful on the central portion of the tumor, you see a centralized vessel and an early inflow. And it's typically for this benign lesion. And this is a very interesting publication from Ultraschall, Ultraschall in der Medizin, 2014. And the author's uh, statement is a short filling time. We see uh, combined with a harder appearance in elastography. And we see this tumor is often small and peripherally suited, hypoechoic. We can do a frozen section examination. And the technique is an organ sparing surgery. That's very important. That's once again our tumor, suspected for a lytic cell tumor. I show you once again the basket pattern based on SMI. Move on to contrast enhanced ultrasound to see the central artery. And if you look very careful on this contrast information, you will see there are only vessels. And the reason is, this is not a lytic cell tumor, this is a hemangioma. It's a very rare case of a hemangioma of the testis. This is an example of a small lytic cell tumor, and you see once again he is small, hypoechoic mostly, hypervascularized, uh, stiff in his strain elastography, and we have a circumferential vessel with a rapid centripetal filling, like in that example of the short video clip. It's an important information to separate benign from malignant tumors, and you see the difference in seminal pa patients where we see a absolute chaotic vessel and a different in the arrival time, which is totally uh, in an opposite position to the benign tumor. This is another example of a seminomer. Look on your left, typical situation, retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis. And if you look very careful in the SMI scan, we see arrows, we see small vessels, and this corresponds very well also with the contrast-enhanced ultrasound, where we can color and code the arrival time, and we see the necrotic portion, and it looks totally different from the, that of the benign tumors. 
Another hot topic for the colleagues of the urology department is MR ultrasound fusion biopsy for prostate cancer detection. We use a scoring system for B mode scanning for strain elastography as well as tissue Doppler imaging. We use power Doppler before and after contrast and contrast enhanced ultrasound to quantify the peak enhancement. And in that case of an adaptive sum score of 0 to 15, we have a very high score value. We pick up this tumor area based on fusion biopsy, and this was a high grade Gleason score cancer. This is our result from 310 patients. Uh, we have 158 cancer cases. Uh, in the history, we have two negative biopsies in this cohort. And the meaning is this is a detection rate of 51%, which is absolutely comparable to that of MR detection. Future developments, it's a good point to use the view box to analyze the tumor retrospectively. And we see some additional point. Here's a low-grade cancer on the opposite side. This was a target biopsy on that area, so it works perfect also for follow-up these patients. A new story is for radiologists, focal therapy of prostate cancer. And that's the situation immediately before uh, the procedure will start. You see we are in the scanning room. That's the lesion and the inflow. We see here a double checking of the monitor based on T2 and MR. This is a kind of brain fusion with the urology department. And then we discuss the case immediately before the operation will start. Next step, we go or move on in the operation theater. This is a technique, how it works. Insertion of the transrectal probe. We use the grid technique and all these guidance is based on ultrasound. We see the prostate very nicely here. And that's the preparison of the IRE needle. That's a very thin needle, very flexible needle. And that's the reason why we use this grid evaluation. We monitor at the same time with ultrasound the needle tip, which is absolutely, absolutely important. We used four needles, like in that example, to destroy the tumor area based on a high voltage application. And this is the same patient, once again, the situation before and after therapy. This is one day later. You see this great perfusion defect, SMI, as a late phase tool, also to analyze this defect. Real-time scanning, once again, in the fusion mode, tumor area before, and we see an absence of vascularity in that area. And of course, based on new straightforward technologies, you can reconstruct this three-dimensional. This is another or additional case where we see the same thing, planning before, analysis in the operation uh, theatre one day later, and this is the MR correlation three months after the application of this technology. Future developments, hopefully we will have an overlay technique, we can use needle tracking for an exact positioning of the needle tip, which is very important to become an effective player in this therapy setup. Short quiz to you, how long does it take to become familiar with the system? That's my son, he's 12 years old, and this is an interaction in, in a workshop in Istanbul, Turkey, and at the coffee break, he used the system and it takes 12 seconds for him to become familiar with the fusion tool. So you see, it's an easy and fast tool, and the reason why he is so perfect is very clear, he's a computer gamer, and you see the final end, he is much better than me. Department of Nephrology. There's a very clear story on uh, Bosniak classification for cystic lesions. This is a typical hemorrhagic cyst, and it's easy to understand there is no flow. And in my opinion, ultrasound must be the gold standard for these lesions because we have the highest resolution. It's an easy story. Another point is to detect an infection zone in a kidney graft recipient. A new technology, SMI, is possible to check out these patients we can reduce the application of contrast agents in some cases, and that's an important information. A good kidney graft recipient, where we see this is a Doppler technique, so you can monitor your resistance index. You will see only with this technique flow in the medullary phase. It's impossible with power Doppler. We can separate, based on elastography, the cortex from the um, other parts of the kidney, which corresponds very well with our MR analysis. Department of Rheumatology. This is a 50, uh, year, 55, 54 years old man with psoriatic arthritis. We see a very small erosion and we see a soft tissue swelling in that case. And at the area of the soft tissue swelling, we have some fluid fly through the synovia on your left. And we see very clear a marked synovial hypertrophy, which is 
much, much higher vascularized based on SMI Doppler. We have to correlate these findings on your left, very careful with contrast information. If you look at these images, these are absolutely comparable. But there is a point on contrast inflow, we can quantify this information. And of course, this is an important story if you have to monitor your drug therapy. And there's also a good point that we have a clear interaction between MR scanning on your left and elastography, because often these areas are very soft. Another point is Sjögren's syndrome. This is a chronic autoimmune disease, and white blood cells destroy especially the salivary glands. And this is named Sicker syndrome. Often we see in our daily routine a so-called secondary Sjögren's syndrome in patients with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic sclerosis. 5% of these patients had lymphomas. This is an example of such a patient on your left and on your right, the normal looking gland. And we see there is a focused area where we can see this is a lymph node. And is this a benign or a malignant process? It's more soft and elastography. And if we analyze the Doppler very carefully, we will see first color coded duplex ultrasound, next power Doppler. Look at this area here. Switch back to SMI and then use the monochromatic tool. And it's absolutely fascinating to see these tiny vessels, to see this round shaped mess. And then you have to put your needle exactly in this portion. And this is the tumor or lymphoma area. We can monitor these patients very carefully with contrast agent in terms of arrival time, which corresponds very nicely with the hypoechoic areas. The meaning is this is an acute inflammatory process. And of course, you can quantify this information once again. And this is a one-stop shopping also to see how stiff is your gland, especially under therapy. Next idea, Department of Gastroenterology. And the hot topic today is to analyze diffuse liver disease in terms of shear wave elastography. You see first the propagation waves, and we can analyze an area in a range between 2 and 5.5 centimeters, a big area. We have exclude the bigger vessels, and then we can measure perfect the shear wave speed in this normal volunteer. In contrast, normal volunteers compared with patients with fibrosis, you see how it works. And our new gold standard, in my opinion, is to scan the whole organ based on MR. And you see we have new techniques. It takes seven minutes without breath hold to analyze the whole liver based on MR. And this corresponds very well with our ultrasound evaluation. And in normal volunteers, we have a shear wave speed of 1.6 in MR and the same collective on 1.7 in ultrasound. Once again, Department of Gastroenterology, this is a patient with Crohn's disease. And if you look at the endoscopic image of the ileocecal valve, we see the sickening of the wall, the edema, and we see the infiltrating vessels based on SMI scanning. This is the same lady with a severe problem, two liver abscesses. And the question is, should we do a drainage, yes or not, as interventional radiologist? Please no, because this is a lot of viable liver tissue. Use first your drug therapy based on antibiotics. Once again, Crohn's disease, this interesting publication from 2015, demonstrate the value of ultrasound in terms of fibrotic gut tissue in patients with stricturing Crohn's disease. We see perfect, this layer is very stiff. The meaning is your drug therapy is not effective on that layer. We can correspond this with shear wave elastography as well as strain elastography and with perfusion. We see SMI, we can quantify the information once again. And I'd like to show you this in real time, look at this. We see beautiful the perfusion, SMI with contrast, and in that layer where we have the fibrotic area, there is no inflow. And that corresponds very nicely with this publication. Coming to a very short outlook. This is a dense breast, that's clear. That's a lady with the familiar history of breast cancer. And um, my wife is a breast surgeon, so I must interpret these images. And if we use MR, we see a clear tumor area. And that's the same tumor area in the second look sonography. And we see an interesting point. There's an edema in the surrounding tissue, also in that portion here of this enlarged duct. And if we analyze the microvascularity or the microvessels, we see this is a DCIS. This is strain elastography at the same tumor. We see a very high value in terms of kilopascal, 95 kilopascal. And then the next step for second scanning is to have an image fusion technology for that tumor, MR ultrasound fusion. And for me, a very interesting point to give contrast agent to see first the feeding artery, then the fill-in, rapid fill-in of the tumor. 
And look at this area here. There's a very bright enhancing area behind the lesion in normal gland tissue. And the reason to see that, this is the DCIS, which corresponds once again nicely with the MR evaluation. And of course, we can pick up this tumor also in the fusion mode based on ultrasound puncture technology. So in conclusion, shear wave elastography of the liver with a mean of 1.7 in normal volunteers. An interesting point and this corresponds very well with the MR elastography. Image fusion is helpful for complex interventions like the IRE for focal prostate therapy. Contrast enhanced ultrasound of cystic lesions or especially of renal um, cystic lesions is well established. We can use this new technology also for tiny testicular lesions. SMI, the new ultrafast Doppler technique for nodal staging and MSK, is superior to power Doppler and color-coded duplex ultrasound. An ultrasound in a new home should be more powerful in the future. I have to say thank you so much for the nice cooperation with Toshiba, especially Europe and Japan. And of course, thank you very much for my team. It was a pleasure to speaking to you. Thank you so much for your kind attention. And that's my last child, my young daughter, and you see the whole family is involved in the ex experience. Thank you so much for your kind attention. <laughs>